Maybe that being uh, going on the first night is not the right way to go. Uh, but and the, could, you, could you imagine the final night? Just how dead that's got to be? <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> talking about the latest edition of the Alone Experience, which takes place roughly before Halloween. Yeah, and, mid October. Uh, yeah, and um, Eileen and I took a little look at the uh, website for the new edition and have listened, learned to our dismay that the prices have gone up. Mm. Yeah. The prices have gone up. There's no secret pre-meeting with the person at the bar who gives you the wooden coin so that you can dance with the unicorn. And no there are fewer, um, s I guess you can call it screenings or right. ni nights that you can go. It's through. a much more limited array yeah, of the calendar. Yeah. So I was just saying how, how this is the way everything goes when it starts out, it's fantastic. <laughs> and once it falls into the clutches of commerce, it starts to suck. It's, it's the law of diminishing returns, my dear. I don't know. If that's what it is. It's, that's what you think it is, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I, I was, I was before we went, we, we hit record. I was bringing up the idea of the idea of becoming the institution. But I if it was an institution, know. it would probably go a lot longer. It's not an institution. Nobody else is picking it up. It's simply <laughs> commerce. Commerce is not a, even an institution. It's just, it's a, um, it's a socially, it's a social habit that's right. bad. <laughs> it's no longer about. In an experiment, it's about making money. It's, right. It's, goals have shifted. It's well. That's usually the real reason why sequels even exist. No. For, first right. and foremost, it's, it's about money. Okay. Back to back to this thing. But, but anyway, so forty bucks. Not sure. Not sure. Paying for forty bucks to be disappointed. But <laughs> then I mentioned to Michael that also now knowing what it's really about this time going in, I'm more likely to act out and um, right. more likely to. Uh, shock the shockers right in other words the last time was sort of a dry run just to sort of uh, take a take the to temperature acquaint. right take the temperature of the environment and uh believe you me listeners on the internet um her encounter with the hooded figures that would you know temporarily accost you in but a darkened were, hall no no actually it was four guys four guys and they were sitting and they told me to sit in a corner and one walked over and loomed over me as if trying to be menacing yeah. how feeble an attempt and i within seconds stuck my fingers into the <laughs> crevices of his collarbone and sunk them in and 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 clutched him and and shook him right Something and um North Star, yeah. he tried to grab me and push me and yeah, he was stronger, but still, I was, he was fighting with muscle and I was fighting with will. And <laughs> Under a description it says, reflection, an amount of energy thrown back by a body without absorption, a thing that is a consequence of or arises from something else. Index of reflection is an exploration of light, sound, self, and surrounding. It is a multi-site, real-world experience, one to three hour experience upon which you may be required to make some small purchases. A few days prior to the start of your journey, you will be given a meeting point and an audio playlist to put on your mobile device. Whoa. Okay, that's interesting. It actually incorporates your, your mobile technology. I'm actually quite intrigued as to what that could be. I ran for three nights in September. The, there was a short one in August 8th and 9th at Scarlet at Pasadena. It was called Index of Refraction. Description for that is going to be Refraction. A bending or changing or deflecting from a straight path. The moment in time when the phase velocity is modified by frequency is sustained. The process of passing from one medium to another shift or change. It's a 15 minute experience we've held at Scarole. Please visit booth 2307 for details. So it was like a booth at, a, at an event. Well, apparently the first one was in June. I guess this is going in reverse. 
The first was June 25th to the 27th, called Index of Diffusion. This was in Los Angeles. Diffusion, a bending or changing or a deflecting from a straight path. The moment in time when the phase velocity is modified, but the frequency is sustained. The process of passing from one medium to another, a directional shift or, or a change. 30 minute transcendent examination on how ideas diffuse through groups as light does through objects, spreading and scattering mass hysteria and social anxieties. And apparently ours, the one we are experiencing is the finale, it's called Index of, of Absorption. And it says, absorption, and assimilating or incorporating or receiving something from the outside. When there is a change in medium and one of substance takes on another, the emitted transmission is thus changed. Dude, you can't expect anything when it comes to the, the human variable. Right. You, you're know, dealing you with never the public. know what people are going to do. This is true. You're dealing with the public, which means automatically about a, about a good amount of your predictability has been reduced by about a good 70%. Yeah, yeah. And I'm getting that, that. Okay, then. So when Michael said that, okay, then I was reminded why this is still a beautiful thing. Yeah. Is is that there, there's no algorithm. There's no... Uh, it's no, there's no, it's not like a video game where you can only do certain things. Yeah, it's not this in rails. Is, this is, yeah, this is completely open, right? They, they've produced a situation that is completely unfamiliar with characters that are unfamiliar, and you are forced to be alone, so you can't take cues or expect any aid from the people you came with. Right. And so it's primal nature to the fore, and... That is pretty interesting. <laughs> so while I may lament that, yeah, it's more expensive, and maybe the sets are not as elaborate, and maybe there aren't as many rooms, and maybe there aren't as many characters, I am going to be the character. <laughs> and I'm going to make this worth it for myself and for them. Roughly 24 hours after the index of absorption came to a close uh, last evening, um, still trying to get my head around what actually happened and, and my general feelings are sort of taking the place of an actual deeper impression. I just feel like this time around, because I was familiar with what was going to happen you know the other part of me was sort of anticipating a, another another bent on the theme or rather a completely new experience based on the principles of what we used before but in a completely different context and what I was processing this time was <clears throat> less that I was empowered with an ability to play and create a role that could actually bob and shift the the temporality of the situation somehow i sort of found myself a majority of the time falling back into the same character i played last year which is sort of a not necessarily passive but not nearly as active as i perhaps saw myself wishing to become uh, i think maybe Last year's, the feeling was largely more um, excitable 
a lot more playful and in many ways uh, a lot less predictable. I felt like this time around there wasn't a room, there wasn't a dark corridor, there wasn't a, a theme environment with which I knew what to expect in a really, after about three or four encounters, I sort of figured it out. And on top of this, there is, surprisingly enough, in this year's alone experience, I found to be quite a bit of padding. <clears throat> there were two moments in there, which, again, I don't wish to spoil it for anybody who has never gone to one of these experiences, but this time around, I found myself in a projector room. And I believe actually that the building we were in is a uh, was a, a studio or a little studio and in and of itself it had a, a couple of screening rooms and I think they were trying to utilize it to as best as they could based on what they had. But I walked into two screening rooms and was able to sit down and be inundated with a video featuring colored patterns and a manifesto playing in the audio of what the Enola Foundation has in store for us as beings of light. And this time around I felt like I was sitting in those rooms a good, both of these rooms, okay, I've sat in there for, in each room for roughly five to twelve minutes each. You know, you do, you add, you do the math, you have fifteen minutes there and I walked out of that, the end of the experience at roughly a little under an hour. So about fifteen minutes of that was spent sitting down and I'm surrounded by fellow patrons including the person I came with you know we'd see each other we would sit next to each other and each person would get called out and turn to leave the auditorium to continue the ride and I noticed that there was a lot of stoppage this time as if they were backed up and the irony is is that there were a lot less people there waiting to enter the experience as opposed to last year where they were letting us in at groups of five and very rarely in that building last year did I ever run into anybody else. This time around I kept having to wait my turn which sort of created a staccato thing where you saw what was going to happen before it happened to you. <laughs> and so I don't know, all things said I, I feel like this time around uh, with the predictability now in hand, the familiarity in hand, I felt like there was a lot less uh, agency on my part. And in a way, I feel like to a certain degree, there's the law of diminishing returns, which I tried to bring up to Eileen, has taken precedence here. And so I think both of us were a little bit, not underwhelmed so much as we saw too much of how the sausage was made while we were being made into sausage. And that was a little, that was a little disconcerting. If they figured out a way to create a, a more meta experience, um, I could see how this could work. And uh, unfortunately as it is, I still feel like the alone experience is still sort of figuring itself out based on whatever environment they have. And as of right now, I feel like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's running face to face with its own, um, moment of success, as it were. So there's a need for redefinition, I think. It needs to blossom into something completely new, like the first time I experienced the audio. And exit. Okay, yeah, so this is like, my goal, which is like 50%? Or? I, was, I was about, a, it was, I'll, I'll be a little generous to say it's about a good 55%. 55% of last year. Right, okay. well the theme was different, so we had to sort of expect a, a different approach. Well, it was more expensive than last year, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, but uh, it was warranted. Yes, you know. Yeah. Proportionally, I know after party. Yeah. I you know onto the streets thing. Yeah, no fake out. Fake out, yeah. Homeless guy. Yeah. Um, sets and costumes were not as elaborate. Yeah. And I felt like. I know like four guys and with one guy, a hooded guy, that would strike me, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't get to fight. <laughs> That's the big one, right? Yeah. The big letdown is that there was no chance for a, a scrap. Yeah. And <laughs> Another notch yeah. to your belt. And so I just like everybody handled it very gently. Yeah, everyone was being really nice to me. Yeah, and I know it was the first night, but maybe that being, going on the first night is not the right way to go. Uh, 
Oh, but, and the, could, could you imagine the final night? Just how dead that's gotta be? <laughs> they just don't go. Cool.